This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and this one refuses to post, which I assume means it turns on, at least, right? Um, if it doesn't turn on, then we've got another set of issues to run through. But uh, when you don't get a signal to your monitor, it could be a number of things. Could be your graphics card, could be uh, an issue with RAM seating, could be just you need to clear your CMOS. Could be that simple, could be a simple wiring issue. There's a lot to dive into in this one, and hopefully by the end of it, we'll have positive results. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're in the market for a gaming PC packing one heck of a punch, consider HP's Omen 45L lineup. They sport the latest and greatest from AMD and Intel, including the Ryzen 7 5800X and up to Core i9 12900K, along with graphics cards ranging from the RTX 3060 up to RTX 3090. You'll find 16 gigs of system memory, plenty of storage, and a unique patented Omen cryo chamber for optimal cooling coupled with a 240ml AIO liquid cooler baked in. Take advantage of Nvidia's DLSS for excellent frame rates and detail in many modern titles. Customize the look and feel thanks to native RGB functionality and settle for peace of mind with HP's warranty. These are meant to be plug and play experiences with zero hassle. Learn more about HP Omen gaming desktops, including how to save up to 10% with promo codes via the links in this video's description. Hey, 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 welcome to Fix or Flop. In this playlist, we attempt to fix viewer systems in and around Orlando, Florida for free. We charge nothing for the service. As long as you're okay with us filming, the process is here. Uh, we make money on the back end, right, by monetizing videos like this on sites like YouTube. Uh, we have wonderful sponsors as well, like the one you just saw, that support us and allow us to continue doing what we're doing here. And so we don't offload any of that cost to the viewer who is already gracious enough, especially in this market, to drive out to meet us and drop the system off and then do it all over again to pick it back up. Gas prices, um, they ain't looking too great. Now this PC here is from a system integrator called iBuyPower. If you live in the States, you've probably heard of them before. You can buy these rigs in, uh, I don't know, brick and mortars like Best Buy. You can buy them online as well. Essentially what they do is curate parts themselves. They assemble the rigs just like you or I would if we were building for ourselves or for our friends. And they put their little stamp of approval on it. Usually there's a baked in warranty, uh, things like that. So there, there might be some benefit to buying a pre-built system like this, uh, especially if you were buying maybe a year or two ago when graphics cards were pretty expensive across the board. Maybe they were able to work out some back-end deals with distributors and manufacturers to lower their costs and they could roll over some of those costs to the end user, the, uh, the, the consumer at the end of it. But uh, for now, this system looks to be decently balanced. We've got a Core i3 or Core i5. It's a stock Intel cooler, so I'm really hoping it's nothing higher than that. Uh, Intel platform, LG 1151, a GTX 1060, three gig, it's a start, and then a 120 gig SSD on top of the basement. The power supply is usually a place where system integrators cut corners because that's where they're able to save a lot of their costs. And to be frank, a lot of consumers really just don't know all that much about power supplies. So they assume, well, if it works, it works. But uh, you, you never know, you might have a ticking time bomb down here. So you gotta be careful about which ones you buy. Uh, the rig again will turn on, I, I, that's my understanding of it anyway, but will not post. So I'm gonna be zooming in very quickly on the graphics card, gonna rule that out. Uh, we'll also clear the CMOS, check RAM seating and the like. Uh, the obvious stuff will get out of the way first. I also wanna give a huge shout out, kind of a, this is a side point here. I wanna give a huge shout out to Gigabyte because I reached out to them. We were running low on AM4 motherboards. We've had to replace quite a few of those in this playlist and they very graciously sent over several, I think four or five, AM4 motherboard specifically for the Fixer Flop playlist. They and others are allowing us to continue doing what we're doing. So thank you, Gigabyte, and thank you to all of our other sponsors who have been supporting this channel so far. First things first, let's power this thing on and uh, well, hopefully we get some sort of, okay, yeah. So it looks like it is turning on. We'll have somewhat of a baseline here so that we know how to improve. I think this is as far as it's gonna go, however. We shouldn't be getting a post. Should have no signal here on the monitor. Everything's connected. Fans are spinning. Graphics card fan is spinning as well. It looks like things are pretty healthy, but nothing. So, alrighty, let's jump into it. Now our first line of defense with a black screen like this and no signal, you gotta think backwards, right? What is connected to the monitor? the HDMI cable, and what's connected on the other side of the HDMI cable, our graphics card. So that's what I wanna check first. It'll take a few seconds only to swap this out. Now back here again, and I apologize, it's gonna be a bit wobbly. I just noticed that the PCIe clip for the uppermost 16 lane slot is completely broken. This shouldn't affect the card itself. It's gonna be locked in, of course, the back of the case, but uh, I did notice that. So 
we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But again, I don't expect that it's the cause for the no signal because we should be still making proper contact with the uh, the pins inside the, the the slot itself. I can't believe I didn't catch this any sooner. And again, this is just, um, yeah, it just comes with the territory having a bunch of uh, cheap stuff like this laying around. I get it all mixed up. This I've been calling a GT710 for a very long time, but you'll notice here at the bottom, this says XFX. XFX is exclusive to AMD GPUs, AMD uh, graphics cards in general. They have, you know, just, they work out deals with one manufacturer over another. A bit like EVGA only offering NVIDIA cards, kind of the same thing for XFX and the other side of the aisle. And that means that this can't be a GT710. It is a very cheap graphics card, however, and I recommend that you buy one of these just to have on standby if you expect to be troubleshooting every now and then. It's also nice that these don't require supplemental power. Installation is very straightforward. I'm gonna try for a post now. This uh, should be pretty straightforward, whether it works or not. It'll roll out the GTX 1060 uh, being the issue. I'm kind of hoping it's not the issue. I don't have extra graphics cards just laying around to hand out. Let's see, come on, give me something. You know what I just realized? This being an Intel platform, we might get lucky here and uh, we might have onboard graphics. Actually, if it's LGA 1151, I don't think they had F-SKUs back then. I'd have to go back and check, but uh, maybe just connect the HDMI cable directly to the motherboard. Maybe then we get a signal. Okay, uh, st still nothing. Let's try resetting. Sometimes that can help. This is not looking too good. I noticed this system has a DRAM in slots A1 and B1. Usually it's slots A2 and B2, but I wanted to be sure because sometimes the motherboard's you know, a little different than the status quo. So I went and looked up the actual uh, manual for this board and it turns out they don't even specify where the two modules need to go first. So we're just gonna do A2 and B2 because that's how it usually is. By the way, the memory itself in his rig looks fine. I don't see any issues with uh, specifically the contact points along the bottom of each DIMM. So at this point, just to recap, uh, we're gonna probably end up swapping out his memory just to rule that out again. Um, I think this is gonna be a, a motherboard issue more than likely at this point but uh, we're gonna try swapping out his memory for a single stick that I know works. We've disconnected all non-vitals just to rule out any, uh, yeah, any weirdness there. And we'll give it a shot with a single Vengeance LPX dim. A few moments later. Hey, what do you know? I, uh, I wasn't filming uh, right away because I didn't expect this to work, but uh, there we go. So that seems to have been the trick. Um, we just have a single module in there, so I'm wondering if we have a dead memory channel because we were trying both of his DIMMs before to no avail. So let's add the second LPX DIMM that I have in the uh, outermost slot and we'll see if we get the same result. So there they are and uh, yeah, still a post. So that means either one of or both of his original DDR4 modules are dead and that, um, that's, I think, a first here on the channel. Usually memory just, it just works. It doesn't usually go bad, especially this early in the product's life cycle, although this might have been built several years ago. Um, it's just not something you run into every day. I'm gonna try a single DIM each, and we're gonna see if it's just one or both. Uh, when they're connected, the system just refuses to post. Aha, uh -huh. and yep, it's this one right here. So actually, uh, a data dim number one works just fine in any slot, but the moment we add a data dim number two, the whole system craps itself, refuses to post at all. The fan curve doesn't kick in, so it, it's not even it's not even past the the just the hardware check phase of the uh, startup. So this module will need to be replaced. I think everything else works just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and keep my vengeance modules in here for him and reconnect everything non-vital just to make sure we're still gonna get a post and we're still gonna get into Windows. I'm also gonna take that to mean that this 1060 three gig here is A-OK, -okay, which again, that was the, that was gonna be the worst case scenario. I could replace it anything else readily, but uh, I was really hoping that this card was not bricked and sure enough, it, uh, seems to not be the issue. Just swapping out a simple DDR4 DIMM is uh, all that was needed. Also, yes, if you notice at the system splash page, this uh, CPU is a Core i7-7700. Like I said, it's not ideal to have anything with an i7 in the name uh, cooled by a stock cooler. And this thing is just, it's just dinky. It's, it's, it's weak. It's one of the worst coolers you could be using. 
And uh, normally I would upgrade this. We're already gonna give him a DDR4 kit though. This is actually the kit that I always use to troubleshoot with, so that's nice, we know it works. And uh, so we'll leave it at that. I I'd rather upgrade another cooler down the line when we're not upgrading something else already in a rig. Everything has been reconnected, and I think our power button's gonna work this time. So we're just gonna make sure that, uh, let me get into the operating system, if there is a boot volume on one of these storage drives. Looks like we have two, because we have two SATA data cables connected to the motherboard. So there's our post, so that's great. And that's with both of our new DDR4 modules in here. And uh, I'll just get my keyboard. I always forget that. Ooh, also just realized I gave him 32 gigs, whereas he only had 16 in his system to begin with. It, that's fine though. It'll be a nice little upgrade for him. And here we are into Windows, so that is great to see. Also went into the BIOS and enabled XMP for him, so he's running it, well, as high frequency as he can with an H270 motherboard. I noticed that this is actually a single stick from an eight stick kit. You can see eight gig times eight here. And there were only two of these DIMMs in his system. So I'm not sure if this is the RAM that was included with the iBuyPower pre-built. It'd be kind of weird if iBuyPower did that. Maybe you get a, sometimes you get a discount with bulk RAM, but uh, if you're buying a single eight, like eight DIMM kit, uh, you usually pay a bit of a premium there because all of those dies are the same and the cache latencies and all that match up So makes it easier for enabling XMP and doing overclocking and stuff, but uh, this is um, maybe just a bit odd I'm gonna try taking out this heatsink see if we can see any physical damage underneath ideally here We could take a heat gun to it. I'm just gonna try to Pry it off be very careful if you intend to do this so you can see our uh, chips there Everything looks pretty good so far. And it looks like this is just single-sided memory, nothing on the back side here, just an adhesive uh, strip. So this is really where all the action is. And again, I don't see anything obvious wrong here. It's possible there's something, uh, there's an issue with maybe one of the chips themselves. And that's not something I can fix in the office. So just swapping the memory module, I think is the quicker, the quicker solution here. Uh, also, you have to take into account the cost as well. If you're a, you know, a, a tech repair shop or whatever, doing this for a living, uh, you have to factor in the time and the effort it would take to replace one of these chips. If you could do it in a few minutes, sure, that might be worth it. You'd have to find a replacement memory chip. Uh, but you know, just replacing a single eight gig module would only cost maybe in this market 20, 30 bucks or so, depending on the DIMM. Uh, so that, in my opinion, is just the swifter, safer, all around best bet. And it'll get the viewer up and running again as quickly as possible. Just for reference, what you'll find under memory chips, like what you just saw in DDR4, are these little balls of solder. These are responsible for the connections uh, between the chip and the circuit underneath. Uh, it could be that some of these balls of solder have just dislodged, similar to how heating a GPU uh, might fix uh, GPU errors. You know, you just, you're essentially reflowing. Uh, and that's not always a guaranteed fix. We could try that here, but I, I'd rather just replace this DIMM outright. Could also be that uh, these are all fine on each memory chip, but the controller, the onboard controller maybe is bad, uh, and that would require, again, soldering. So uh, I think just swapping the DIMM is the quickest bet. If you hear my kid in the background, he's revving his cars. He loves Hot Wheels. Were you revving that race car? <laughs> ah, like that as R8, all right. Told you. But anyway, this is great news. Uh, honestly, replacing DRAM is like the easiest thing. Uh, apart from clearing the CMOS and maybe like reconnecting cables, swapping out a memory module is, is like the, that's one of the easiest steps in troubleshooting. And uh, surprisingly, in this case, that fixed the issue, which I think is a first here for uh, the Fixer Flop playlist. So uh, I just sent a text to the owner, let him know it's up and running again. We just had to replace a single DIMM, but I upgraded him. Uh, with a uh, 32 gig kit that we know works. So it should be good, hopefully for years to come. Thank you so much for watching this far into this video. If you enjoyed seeing the troubleshooting process play out, maybe you learned a thing or two, let me know in the comment section below. And by giving this one a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't subscribed yet, get subscribed. And remember, if you or someone you know who lives in or around Orlando, Florida has a broken system, maybe it, uh, maybe it doesn't turn on at all. Maybe it just doesn't send a picture to your screen, as was the case here. Send us an inquiry. We have a link in the video description description where you can submit photos as well as a description of the issue and we just might get to you and uh, well at least attempt to fix your system for free. Again thanks so much for the support. My name is Greg and thanks for learning with me.